My name's David Hearn. I'm a third generation farmer here at E&M Hearn. Uh, we're based in northwest Norfolk, which is on the Wash. The water's just over there. I started my agricultural career at Agricultural College in 1994. Um, I spent a year and a half working in the States before coming back onto the family farm. And I've been on the family farm uh, since approximately year 2000. 160 hectares approximately is the farm size. And we grow vining peas, spring barley, winter wheat and sugar beet. This particular farm has been in the family for three generations, I'm the third generation, but my family history goes back, we've been in agriculture for hundreds of years. So yeah, it's, it's in the blood, it's definitely in the blood. <laughs> my wife helps quite a bit on the farm in respect to the bookwork and office work, and also just generally just being around to support me on the farm. My eldest son is heavily involved with um, theatre lighting, and helping uh, design sets and lighting for theatre. He's going off to Norwich to study that in September. And my uh, youngest daughter likes to help me on the farm and is showing a keen interest in agriculture. The product behind me is NutriBio, it's a digestate. We use this because it has a, a high rate of phosphate in. It's really good to use um, before a second wheat. It also has um, sulfur in it, which is really useful to us. And we also are using it to help build our organic matter within the soil. So as our, hopefully our organic matter indices of the soil increase, our soil will become much more resilient to weather anomalies such as drought or the other extreme with uh, you know, flooding or extremely wet conditions. The other great thing about it is it's sourced locally. It only comes from five miles up the road. So, we're using this, it's nice and local, we've not got lots of carbon footprint and miles, it's an um, organic fertiliser, not man-made, so it's really good for the environment as far as I'm concerned and great for the soil and great for everybody. We've got these young juvenile worms and these are really great for our soil structure and soil, so they're working in, in the top layer here of soil where we've got lots of organic matter from the chopped straw. We've also got um, the uh, biomass left over from the cover crops and they're, they're effectively a free cultivation. They're keeping the soil nice and open and effectively also producing lots of little channels. The back end of 2023 and through into the spring of 2024 has been the wettest on record and like every other farmer in the UK we really struggled to get the beet out and even when we did lift the sugar beet in this particular field establishing a wheat crop was very very difficult um, we did manage to plough and drill it and I'm for the year I'm very satisfied with it but there will be issues caused by this wet weather that will follow this crop right through even past harvest where soil structure and lots of other problems will have to be put right. This weather is the wettest I've ever known. My father, who's now 72, has never known it this wet and nor my grandparents. So it's, it really has been a tricky one. We use the weather station to make or help make informed decisions on the best spray windows to apply our products and also to look at hopefully good detailed weather forecasts going forward so hopefully we can make again more informed decisions when we're going to apply those products perhaps before a weather event or whether it needs to be after depending on growth stages of the crops so by bringing that together hopefully we make good good informed decisions and make the best of it as that we possibly can so the wet weather we've had this year has had like many other farms in the uk quite a big effect we've had to do re-drilling on the farm We've also had to do, in one case, on uh, two smallish fields, we're now in our third drilling, which is spring barley, due to some too much black grass pressure and unable to apply any pre-ems due to the wet weather. Yep, so the information from the weather station is uh, real time. So we're getting the information here. It's live, it's there at the fingertips. So when we're applying, we can check wind speeds at boom level, which I think is really important as well. Um, when we're checking that and I'm also getting really good data on um, air moisture, leaf moisture, so we can apply those products depending on the product at the optimum time. 
So this wheat will be marketed through a farmer-owned cooperative called Openfield. And we grow milling wheat as part of our, our cropping because it's used in bread, biscuits, uh, crackers, all sorts of things. And this wheat hopefully will go to a fairly local mill, but potentially could even go for export to any country around the world. This wheat is a first wheat after sugar beet. The variety is LG Skyscraper. I've chosen Skyscraper in this instant after sugar beet because it's a very growy variety. So I'm looking for something that we're drilling late and potentially not ideal conditions that's going to grow away. It's a group four soft wheat with the potential of some of it going in for low grade milling. So we're hoping for a small premium on that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we hope for 10 tonnes of hectare yield and we'll harvest this all being well early August. In this field, we have sugar beet. It's a variety BTS 1915. Again, this field had a sumo cultivation back in the late summer. We then established a cover crop. The cover crop we saw through, through the winter. We then terminated that cover crop and power harrowed once and straight in with the beet drill and I think you know it works really well for us. We, we have plenty of moisture in the seed bed, great establishment, but I feel the plant count speaks for itself. So this, this sugar beet here will be grown for British sugar. It will be processed in their factory at Whisington, which is approximately 25 miles from here. Sugar beet in this area is a massive part of the rotation. It's a great spring crop. It's great for um, winter birds, so now you may hear we've got lots of skylarks. Historically from this field, I hope for 90 tonne a hectare of sugar beet, perhaps more if, if things go well. We'll look to lift this crop probably the middle to third week of October and hopefully by the end of October, uh, first wheat established in, fingers crossed, good conditions. So this field behind us here is uh, vining peas, so a fresh pea. These peas will be harvested, hauled and frozen within 90 minutes. Uh, they're a fresh pea, they go very locally, only seven miles away to the, the local um, factory. And they will be in the, the, the bags you'll see in Marks and Spencers or Tesco's or wherever it may be of frozen peas. So um, this machine behind me is a set of rolls. Uh, we use these rolls to consolidate the seed bed, to conserve moisture and level the seed bed. In this case, because it's vine and peas, so they're nice and level for the harvester and they're pick and reel for picking up the peas. So in this field, we've got uh, Laureate Spring Barley. It's for malting. In this case, it's a second um, barley crop. Simply because of the wet winter we had, this field is quite heavy land, it's not got wonderful drainage and we just couldn't plant wheat. We didn't even try, so we went back and put uh, spring barley in in the spring. And behind me you can see the, the trial here. This is a Ramularia trial and I'm very keen to do trials and work with people um, on trials because we need this information um, and to work together to, to, to make ourselves a much more sustainable industry and working together.